Welcome to CEC online uh, lectures. This is Dr. Lopur Agrawal, Associate Professor, Department of Commerce, Shaheed Bhagat Singh College, University of Delhi. I'll be talking today on uh, compensation management. Compensation management is basically a part of human resource management. I hope uh, you must have read about the wage and salary administration in human resource management. And that is basically what uh, what is known as compensation management when we go for the advanced studies in that area. So today, uh, the agenda of my uh, discussion and the lecture uh, is to introduce you to the compensation management, to tell you about the meaning and definition of compensation management, the objective and principles of compensation management. Then uh, let us start with the introduction of compensation management. And before uh, we talk about the objective and the principle, it is uh, must to know about what is the meaning of compensation. Basically, the compensation is a substitute word of wages and salaries. And it has recently originated as compensation. The literature of wages and salaries are enormous, but uh, it considers uh, um, uh, the issues from a legal viewpoint. However, wages have now become a very significant part or a very sig uh, sig significant as a cost factor. The term compensation, if we talk about, it represents the exchange between employees and the organization. As both get something in return for something else. For example, for the job an employee does in the organization, he is being paid by the organization. So it is in return of his contribution or the employee's contribution, the compensation is being given to the employees. So that's why it's uh, said that compensation represents the exchange between the employees and the organization. In the past, if we take the compensation issues, uh, which is often confidential and governed by individual employers' preferences and choices. But time has been changed. However, in today's competitive world, the compensation policies have become more transparent and the employees make their own choices based on the compensation packages. So, gone are the days when the uh, you know employees were uh, beggars. Now the employees are choosers. So can they, they can choose their own compensation. The meaning here, it, it means to say that the employees are being offered with the compensation packages in name of variable pay. And he's also, uh, you know, given a chance to uh, pick up his own compensation as per his wishes. So hence the balancing the cost of compensation and retaining the employees have become priority for the organization. It's also very difficult to retain employees and that's become a very, very uh, important or integral part of the compensation management that how to retain employees through its strategic plan. Uh, if uh, I discuss a few definition of compensation uh, along with the meaning of compensation, how it's being defined time to time by different authors. So I'll be taking you to a few definitions. I would like to Tell you one thing, but do you know that uh, in Japan, what does it mean? In Japan, basically, the Japanese term of compensation is house you, which means reward. So in Japan, the compensation is also is known as reward. It's not being named as compensation. So uh, there is a difference, you know, in the meaning of reward and compensation when you say. In the, for the lectures, it will be more clear to you all and you will be... Uh, Getting to know about the meaning of reward, then we'll be, we'll be discussing on intrinsic reward and extrinsic rewards, right? So, host you means reward, and they don't say that we are giving compensation to the employees, they say that we are rewarding our employees. Whereas in China, the word is dai yu, it's dai yu. So, it is used for compensation in China, which means how you are being treated in terms of the wages you are given. Give, uh, given the benefits the employees are given, 
the training opportunities they are getting in the organization so how they are being treated so what's the employer and the employee's relationship so they focus on this thing and they take you know compensation as uh, this uh, they name compensation as dai you right now uh, let us discuss or let us just um, talk about one definition very old definition by daily order he said that compensation is paying people for work yeah it's okay that's the very basic meaning as we earlier uh, talk about that compensation is something in exchange the employees are getting so he said that compensation is paying people for work that's very simple meaning literal meaning it's uh, self explanatory that you are giving your employees for the job they are doing to your uh, job they are doing in the organization another definition if we take according to keith devis he said compensation is what employees receive in exchange for their contribution to the organization there's a very important term here that is contribution so contribution is basically you know it takes employees job in totality what the value the employees adding to the uh, organization right so uh, this is how keith devis has defined compensation uh, now if we take the another definition given by flipo he said that the function compensation is defining as adequate and equitable remuneration of personnel for their contributions to the organizational objectives so the important term here is that adequate and equitable remuneration he talks about equity in compensation which is one of the objective or the guiding principle of compensation management that we should consider the equity in compensation system so it should be adequate means it also talk about the fair pay or fair compensation to the employees so in his definition he define compensation as the function compensation is defining as adequate and equitable remuneration of personnel for their contributions to the organizational objectives uh, one another interesting definition by cassio uh, cassio Uh, is compensation includes direct cash payments and indirect payments in the form of employees benefits and incentives to motivate employees to strive for higher level of productivity so here the important uh, you know what different you are getting in this definition is it he is talking about the direct and indirect payment both the payments he is talking about so the direct and the indirect means the monetary and the non monetary it is also known as base pay and the supplementary pay which in the further lecture we'll come to know about here you just uh, know this thing there is a direct cash payment and there is indirect payments which is basically are the non monetary benefits given to the employees for their contribution and the last definition by milkovich how he has defined compensation he defined compensation is all forms of financial returns tangible services and benefits employees receive as part of an employment relationship so uh, he is also talking about the employment relationship he is talking about the lasting relationship an employee and employer must be having in the organization for the organizational effectiveness and for that the compensation paid to the employees in form of financial returns and the tangible services and benefits uh, the employer he uh, gives to the employee for their contribution so here the financial returns basically refers to an individual's base salary as well as short and long term incentives you can say and the tangible services and benefits are such things as insurance paid vacations or uh, sick days pension plans um any other employee discount and so on right so uh, this is all about uh, the meaning of uh, compensation and i have uh, explained and just took a few definitions given by different authors and the renowned authors so uh, let us now discuss and let us now take the other topic um, in this first of this first lecture that is objectives of compensation management if i say you know what's the objective of this compensation management and what should be the objective of compensation management there are principles also there are some guiding principles which actually guide you to form such objectives 
So first, first we'll discuss on the objective of compensation management. If uh, in nutshell, I talk about the basic objective of this management, of this compensation management, there are only three basic uh, this objective. One is to attract top talent. Second is to retain those talent. And third is to motivate those talent to work in your organization, in your organization. Attracting talent, when I'm saying talent, it's, you know, we are considering human resources, human assets. And talent uh, is about that uh, the right person for the right job. So when you are attracting the right person for your organization, so the, you, it means that you are acquiring the top talent for your organization. Attracting top talent through compensation strategies or the compensation system, it's the foremost uh, objective of compensation management. So if we talk three, these objectives to attract top talent, let us say to attract top talent, it's one of the primary goals of compensation to, to you know, recruit qualified talent. When you have a competitive compensation plan in place, you'll be better able to attract top industry talent. That's the fact. Now, if when we are saying to retain those talent and to reward those personnel, so well said, you know, don't lose your top talent to your competitors because employee believes that the grass will be greener elsewhere. Find out market values for your employees and pay accordingly. We can also set up pay performance models to drive performance by encouraging associates to reach new goals and push farther. Push farther. So to retain talent and to reward them fairly, it's again the uh, very objective of compensation management. And the next is to boost motivation of employees. Um, and if uh, this is the objective, and it is also said that when uh, the compensation system is structured effectively, the compensation plan can drive motivation across your team. Employees who know that they are being fairly compensated for their work, they feel appreciated and are therefore more likely to engage, committed and productive. A well-developed compensation plan can also increase job satisfaction in general. That is what researchers say, that if you have a very uh, good system of compensation or the organization having a well-developed compensation plan, they can also, they can increase the job satisfaction level among employees. There is one more objective of uh, compensation management that is to be compliant. What is this? Compensation is not just about being fair with the industry. It must comply with the federal regulation. And while adhering to the standards, it may complicate sometimes the compensation management of the organization. But at the same time, it also helps uh, protect your company against litigation and ensure fairness across the board for your personnel. So if you are complying with the uh, federal regulations, so and adhering to the standards, uh, it will definitely protect your company against any litigation and also ensures fairness uh, among the you know em among the personnel or the employees in the organization. Another objective uh, and the fifth objective, the basic objective we talk about is to maximize ROI. ROI is that is return on investment. Uh, we say you know it requires some fine tuning, but compensation management is most effective when you get the biggest bang for your buck. In other words, if you can create a compensation plan that stays within budget while also driving productivity to pay for performance and other motivational tactics, you are creating a plan that's both equitable for the company and advantages for hardworking employees. So a good compensation plan or a system objective must be, you know, to maximize the return on investment. Now, this is what the basic objective I talked about. 
basically we count you know four or five objectives but if i take you to some of the researchers and how they concluded about the objective of compensation in one of the study of bhattacharya who has uh, in his study in 2009 he provided uh, a few more compensation objectives which is um, uh, here on the screen one is equity the first is equity the second is efficiency then he said that macro economic stability is also one of the objective or should be of the objective of compensation system or a plan then the efficient allocation of labor should also be one of the objective of compensation plan then uh, motivating employee retaining employee then they are the other further objective which we have already discussed that also he has given in his study that these are also the objectives of the compensation but what else he discussed in his study is that the efficiency equity macroeconomic stability efficient allocation of labor these are the uh, uh, you know main objective or these are the very uh, important objective which should be the objective of a good compensation plan now if we take the first objective what bhattacharya has discussed and concluded in his study and if we talk about the equity what is this equity so generally speaking uh, this category you know which is uh, equity is known for its you know several forms it may include income distribution through narrowing of inequalities increasing the income of lowest paid employees <clears throat> protecting real wages and the concept of equal pay for work of equal values so generally what we take or what we you know grasp for graph from equity is that equal pay for work of equal values the rest of the things you know there are other dimensions also like income distribution through narrowing of inequalities increasing the income of lowest paid employees protecting real wages but generally we take the meaning equity and our mind goes to you know this equity means equal pay for work of equal values yeah that actually talks about the internal and external equity and that's what you know when we uh, deal with this term in compensation management we generally talk of internal and external equity there are different other parameters also of equity which should also be considered while making the compensation plan but so no, uh, basically uh, what we talk into the compensation management is the equity uh, in regard to internal and external equity so what is this internal equity and external equity the internal equity <coughs> requires pay related to the worth of similar job so that similar job gets similar pay so internal is basically the similar pay for the similar job and the external is means the paying workers what other firms in the labor market pay comparable workers so external is about you know paying as per the market rate so uh, this this is about internal and external equity and that should be the objective of a compensation plan that it must uh, this maintain the level of internal and external equity it must consider uh, the factor of internal and external equity it should attain that internal and external equity through, through its uh, strategic or through its uh, properly designed plan there may be you know differences also but that should be logical the compensation differential based on differences in skills or contribution are also uh, or a part of equity if you are paying extra to someone else for the better performance that is reasonable that's also you know equitable and justifiable payment you are making to the other employee right so that doesn't mean that uh, equity means that equal pay to everyone if the other person is working better or harder and on that ground he is being paid uh, extra that is equitable that is justifiable because paying less to that person again is unjustified 
So that's again uh, will not come under the category or will not come under the equitable or justifiable payment to the other party who is paid, uh, doing extra effort. Now uh, the second uh, objective which uh, Bhattacharya in the study of Bhattacharya he uh, took is that is efficiency. So objective is efficiency uh, is also one of the consider one uh, consideration or factor or the uh, which must be considered by the organization. So the objective of efficiency are reflected in attempts to link a part of wages to productivity or profit, group or individual performance, acquisition and application of skills and so on. An arrangement to achieve efficiency may also be seen as being equitable if they fairly reward performance or uh, inequitable if the reward is viewed as unfair, right? So, the third objective which Bhattacharya has discussed is macroeconomic stability. So, what is that? that he said that the compensation management uh, objective must be to attain or to gain that macro or it must contribute to the macroeconomic stability. And it can be achieved through high employment levels and low in inflation. For instance, an inordinately high minimum wages would have an adverse impact on levels of employment. Though at what level these consequences would occur, it's a matter of debate. So though compensation and compensation policies are only one of the factors which impinge on macroeconomic stability, but they do contribute. And they do contribute to balance and into the sustainable economic development. So it should also be uh, one of the objective uh, for compensation management. And the next is efficient allocation of labor. So how does compensation management, they are contributing towards the efficient allocation of labor. So the efficient allocation of labor in the labor market implies that the employees will move to wherever they receive a net gain. So such movement may be uh, from one geographical location to another or from one job to another within or outside the enterprise. One job to other means it's maybe within the organization or outside the organization. And the provision or availability of financial incentives causes such movement. So for an example, if we take worker may move from a labor surplus or a low wage area to a high wage area. They may acquire new skills to benefit from the higher wages paid for skills when an employer's wages are below market rates. Employee turnover increases. When it is above market rates, the employer attracts job applicants. When employee move from declining to growing industry, an efficient allocation of labor due to structural changes takes place. If you're getting this, and that, uh, that how you know, a worker may move from a labor surplus or a low wage area to a high wage area and they may acquire new skills to benefit from the higher wages paid for skills. When an employer's <coughs> wages are below market rates, employee turnover increases and so on. When it is uh, above market rates, the employer att attracts job applicants. When employee move from declining to growing industry, an efficient allocation of labor due to structural changes takes place. So this is how uh, this objective, you know, this compensation management uh, contribute to the efficient allocation of labor as well. Now the rest of the, uh, uh, this objectives like motivating the employees, we have already discussed. But again, um, I'll again take you to the, uh, these uh, objectives which Bhattacharya has uh, mentioned in his study. He further said that motivating the employees is one of the objectives. The employee may have uh, talent, but they may not have may not be motivated to to use their talent unless they know that they will be rewarded duly for their contribution towards organizational objectives, or be punished for not contributing as per their demands of the job. So it's very important that how you are designing the compensation plan. 
It's a reward to the contributing employees and punishment to the non-contributing employees. So there may be fear of punishment as well for motivation, and there will be there must be you know rewards as well uh, for the performances. Then he also talk about that acquire qualified employees is also one of the objective of compensation management. That how it helps in acquiring qualified employees, which we discussed like acquiring of uh, talent or the top talent. It's a, talking about the compensation needs to be high enough to attract right person or to attract the applicants. And the pay level must respond to supply and demand of workers in the labor market since employers do compete for workers, right? Then again, he is talking about retain current employees. So it's, it's uh, retention of current employees or the existing employees is also one of the objective of compensation management. What it says that employees may quit when compensation levels are not competitive, resulting in higher attrition or turnover rate. Therefore, one of the important objective of compensation management is retaining the human capital or talent of the organization. Then uh, one of the this uh, objective is reward desired behavior. If you need a particular behavior, you have to reinforce the reward. So pay should reinforce desired behavior and act as an incentive for those behaviors to occur in future. So effective compensation plan, compensation plan rewards performance, loyalty, experience, responsibility and other behaviors. And also he's said that control force is one of the objective. A rational compensation system helps the organization obtain and retain workers at reasonable cost. Without effective compensation management, workers could be overpaid or underpaid. So these are the objectives uh, of a compensation management. Um, the basic is to retain, to attract, to motivate, to maximize ROI and then further you know what uh, one of the study in that it has been uh, uh, so many objective has been um, mentioned um, and this uh, and given by the author uh, now I'll be discussing on the principles of compensation management. So, uh, in this principles of compensation management, in nutshell, there are a few guiding principles like ability to pay, it should be non-discriminatory, it should comply, uh, all the you know, federal regulation, it should be simple and flexible, it should be uh, employee, uh, its orientation should be employee development, development, it should be performance orientation, equity consideration. So there are a um, number of principles and uh, to just discuss a few, uh, we can say you know, the first principle of compensation management is the organization should have an unambiguous plan to determine differential pay levels in terms of different job requirements involving varied skill, exertion, responsibility and working conditions. The second principle is an attempt should be made to keep the common level of wages and salaries of the organization in line with that obtained in the labor market. There must be adequate attention should be taken to distinguish people from the job. Although people are paid in terms of rate embodied in specific jobs, some exceptions should be allowed in the cases of professional and executive personnel by paying them in terms of their abilities and contribution. Next is the care should be taken irrespective of individual consideration to ensure that equal pay for equal work. And then there should be a plan to adapt an unbiased measure for identifying individual differences in capacity and contribution in the form of rate ranges with the grade increment, wage incentives, schemes and a system of job promotion. Next is there should be proper procedure for handling the wage grievances in organization. 
then there should be adequate care should be taken to inform the employees and the union if any about the procedure followed in determining wage rates there should be no confidential wages and the employee should have a clear understanding of their wage or salary structure and this will definitely enhance the employee satisfaction with wages and there are certain guiding principles which provide the foundation for effective management so in this way in nutshell uh, what are the principle governing compensation administration that is maintaining equity maintaining com uh, competitiveness matching employee expectation reinforcing positive employee behavior eliminating any discrepancy optimization of management and employee interest maintaining good interpersonal relationship and harmony and to conclude with a good compensation system is always devising a system that is most efficient for your organization so in this way uh, uh, what we have discussed today is about the objectives the basic objectives we generally uh, uh, design or we consider while designing a compensation system and then few objectives from the study of bhattacharya given in 2009 so few objectives from that study we have discussed today and uh, the basic principles uh, or the governing principles of compensation uh, and the very meaning and key definition of compensation i hope uh, uh, now you have understand or you have understood the very meaning of compensation and the objective and principles of compensation and uh, we'll be discussing further on the philosophy of compensation and the components of compensation in the next lecture thank you so much